what am I trying to say? The only person that is that have a voice shouting for pan Africanism today is Malema, and he is in the government of South Africa. So if you know that you actually love Africa and you really want pan Africanism to come to reality. There is a need for you to support Biafra because that is where the Pan-Africanism will rise. You need people in the government that knows what Africa people need. And Biafra have young, vibrant men and women who will make that Pan-Africanism to become a reality. So if you don't support Biafra, your dream is dead and dead on arrival. My fellow Biafrans, December 2nd, we are going to make history. This December 2nd is sacrosanct in the history of Biafra as we are going to fulfill our destiny on that very day. The heaven and the earth will stand still to witness the occasion. The sun will bear witness and the enemies will tremble before us as the world behold the emergence of the United States of Biafra on international stage. For decades, Biafra have stood firm, fearless, resilient, and unwavering against Nigeria terrorism and oppressors. Today, we on the bricks of the new era. We are ready to claim and reclaim our destiny and officially restore Biafra as an independent nation. This is, isn't just the culmination of journey. It is fulfillment of a dream that our ancestors and heroes set in motion long time ago between 1967 and 1970. Their vision is now our reality and every Biafran alive today is part of this historic legacy. Those of you in the United States that has made us to realize this dream up to this point, you are a hero and hearing of the Biafra nation. The Biafra Convention 2024 from November 29 to December 3rd, 2024. These days, Biafra from all over the walks of life will gather in Lahte, Finland for a five day event that will mark the beginning of the new era for generations to come. This is more than just convention. And I'm telling you, the enemy are not happy. They have done everything, thinking that Nigeria can control and can get anything they want. But today, we are not just asthmating them. We are showing to them that not every country supports evil. It's a unification of a people reclaiming their identity, purpose, and future. The energy will be electrifying, historic and the pride, uncontainable as Biafrans come together to declare their restoration of their sovereignty. This monumental and historical event will showcase the symbol of our independence and identity and here's what we have in stocks. For those who have been asking questions, what is this convention all about? You want to declare independence in a foreign land? We are not declaring independence in a foreign land. The independence of Biafra has already been declared. We are only restoring our lost sovereignty. Just like the Lithuanians. The point is that the people don't read history. We are not going to be the first country to restore a lost sovereignty state. We will launch the Biafra National Identity Card and Passport during the Finland Convention. 
Finally, making every Biafran place and belonging official across the globe, we will unveil Biafra Ejema during this convention. The Biafra currency will be unveiled. A testament to our economic independence and strength. The flag of the United States of Biafra will be raised standing tall as a banner of our unity and resilience. Representing Biafra to the world, we also will adopt the Biafra Constitution during this convention, a document that enshrines our right principles and governance for our new nation during this convention. We will also present a map of the United States of Biafra officially, defining our rightful borders and land. It is not just a map. It's a declaration of our place in the world. My fellow Biafrans in the US, we have dignitaries that will embrace the convention in Finland. Powerful policy makers from different parts of the world will be present in Finland. Powerful speeches will echo throughout the event with delegate and key international figures voicing our shared struggle for freedom, resilience, and determination. And in a formal oral declaration of independence, of the restoration of the independence of Biafra, we will outline each vital aspect of our freedom step by step, solidifying our path to sovereignty state. This convention will also feature national debate on the issue that matters most to our new nation. Uniting Biafrans from all backgrounds, representatives from across the 40 United States of Biafra, delegation from the different countries where Biafra has their lands and offices, and vote on bills, creating the legal backbone of our nation. The establishment of the declaration document will formally declare our restoration of independence of Biafra. Marking our collective vision for the future and to seal this commitment, Biafra delegate will sign this historic document symbolizing our dedication to a free and independent Biafra. This is just the tip of the iceberg. As many other incredible things will unfold as the United States of Biafra begin to formally enter into bilateral relationship with other existing nations of the world. And in this convention, we will have one of the imagining nation president to be part of it. This is not just gathering of people. It will be unified voice of over 50 million Biafrans who have already voted in the South referendum, reflecting the clear will of the people to establish the United States of Biafra. On November 28, the final vote count will be concluded. And if the majority says yes, to independence of Biafra. The Biafra people will give the Biafra government the mandate on December 2nd to officially declare the restoration of independence of Biafra, fully defend it. The Biafra government will then be empowered by this legal document that will be generated from this convention and granted all legitimacy over a sovereign and independent United States of Biafra. This whole world will be watching and the history await us all. I want you to understand that once this document has been generated and the constitution of Biafra is voted on, which is a continuous document, a living document from the 1967 to 1970, the battle for the recognition of Biafra will then begin.
at the same time, the legitimization of the Nigeria state within Biafra land will enter gear 10. And as that is happening, we will continue to make sure, like the court have shut down today, we will not have any single Nigerian representative from that institution. Because what they have done to us Hello. will take us decades to recover. They have brought, the judiciary have brought anarchy, insecurity. Okay. And what have you in Biafra land? And the earlier we eradicate them, the earlier we evict them, the better for us. Biafra government have already laid down all the principles and mechanism to begin to set out the judiciary of the Biafra government. It's going to take us time. If you think that this is going to be easy, think again. But let me tell you, we have every template, step by step. And you can see we are winning this war even without firing a shot. The diplomatic approach, political approach, and armed struggle approach can never fail us this time around. We will make sure we give sleepless night to those who don't want us to sleep. We will give violence to those who brought violence to us. We will defend ourselves with the same mechanism they have come to kill our people. Guns and bullets. I want you to be very proud of yourself because it is because of you that Biafra land have seen and enjoy peace. Irrespective of the propaganda, do not listen to them. Every one of us, every true Biafran, the 50 million Biafran people who have voted for the self-referendum knows the word and they trust this government. And that is the reason every time we ask them to do something, they do it willingly because they know it is all for their good. The price they pay today, they will enjoy tomorrow. If you have not joined this struggle, I don't know what you are waiting for. The time is now. Because tomorrow may be too late for you. We will continue to defend our land against Nigeria state. We will continue to demand the withdrawal and the militarization of the Biafra land. We will continue to make sure that all checkpoint is dismantled. It does not matter how long it takes us. We will continue to engage them one after the other until they are gone from our land. Thank you very much. Airborne to the Biafra Defense Force. Airborne to the Biafra Liberation Army. They have not even seen anything. We will give them madness. And at the end, everybody will help Biafra. And we will give glory to God. Thank you very much. May God bless all of you. All right, wonderful people. Welcome back to this wonderful channel where we bring you back to back update and information as you want. In case you have not joined our social media handle, what are you waiting for? Kindly go ahead and subscribe, like, comment, share, and also remember to on your notification button so that whenever our news drop, you will be the first. We will collect them. Let's go down to the news proper as it the hot. A lawmaker representing Ikwano Umwaya North, Umwaya South Federal Constituency, Abia State, Obi Agocha, has visited the detained leader of the indigenous people of Biafra, Nam De Kano. The visit, which took place on Thursday, October 24, 2024, is part of an ongoing effort to find a political solution to the continued detention of the IPOB leader, Kano, who was arrested on June 27, 2021, in Kenya and subsequently extradited to Nigeria, is facing charges of terrorism, treasonable felony, and inciting violence through his radio Biafra, amongst others. A statement issued on Saturday by the media team of the lawmaker noted that Agocha was recently approached by Kano's legal team complaining of its inability to interface with the detained leader. The statement read in part, A few days ago, the lawyers to Nam the Kano reached out to his honorable member, Obi Agocha, representing Ikwano Umwaya North and Umwaya South Federal Constituency, this was about the long-running difficulties being encountered 
by the Lego team in their effort to gain access and meet with their clients. Honorable Obi Agocha took urgent steps in writing the Department of State Security and Tajun Abbas, Honorable Speaker of the 10th House of Representatives, seeking their immediate intervention. A meeting of the aforementioned was positive to the effect that Honorable Obi Agocha, having inquired from the DSS, who informed that the seeming pause to assessing Mazan Nekano was occasioned by his lawyers asking the judge to rescue herself, which requires further legal processes and is also known to both parties. Honorable Obi Agocha had a physical audience with Nam Nekano on Thursday, 24th of October 2024, in the company of an immediate family member, MS Ezioma Stella Ibon Honorable. Honorable Obi Agocha fully briefed Mazen and Nekano about the circumstances during their meeting. The statement further noted that the Lego team have now been granted access to Kano. A resolution was reached regarding the lack of access to Nam de Kano by his Lego team, who hereby are granted the requisite access to their client, the statement added. It also condemned the DSS leadership in its handling of the medical needs of Kano, saying, Nam de Kano is keeping well and looks strong. Honorable Agocha appreciates the commendable efforts of the new leadership of the DSS in ensuring that Nam the Kano's health care needs are met, including the approval of his request for access and attention to private medical care and to a doctor of his choice, to which Honorable Obi Agocha is pleased to confirm that Mazen Nam the Kano has received private medical attention as, current, as recently as October 3, 2024. Honorable Agocha deeply appreciates the uncommon and courageous effort of the Honorable Speaker of the 10th House of Representatives of his quick intervention, which has facilitated these positive outcomes. It should be noted that Mazen Namdekano's fundamental human rights are guaranteed under the 1999 Nigeria Constitution as amended and other relevant instru instruments of the Nigerian Na United Nations should be upheld. Honorable Obi Agocha remains optimistic that, in the end, a political solution will be achieved, leading to the release of Mazen Namdekano and also for the peace and stability of the Southeastern people. All right, welcome back. Uh, we are just coming from um, Mazen Namdekano's detention center in the DSS custody, uh, where Honorable Obi Agocha uh, visited Namdekano and according to him, he said he has resolved the issue uh, between Nkano and the DSS people. Of course, you know that uh, Mazen and Nkano's Lego team uh, were barred from visiting him. But as it is, that matter has been resolved. Even though that I was expecting to hear from Honorable Biagocha date of Mazen and Nkano's release. But of course, from what you can see... Uh, the politicians are still beating around the bush. They have refused to go straight to the point uh, to demand release or protest for the release of Mazen and Kano, the leader of the indigenous people of Biafra. Remember that Kano has promised that if he is released anytime, that the insecurity in the southeast will receive what is called a pause and stop. Another information. Uh, the IPOB has said that Nam De Kano is their sole founder. IPOB tells Nigerian Army. Let's go down to the full detail of that particular information. The indigenous people of Biafra, IPOB has accused the Nigerian Army of intimidating and misleading the judges handling the case of its leader, Mazen Nam De Kano, with fake news about the Pro Biafra group. The Pro Biafra group also dismissed as falsehood and lie from the pit of hell. The claim by the Nigerian army that it has arrested the founding father of IPOB, adding that it is one of the lies and fake news the Nigerian army has been using to intimidate and mislead the judges handling the case of its leader, Mazen Nam Dekano. IPOB, in a statement by its media and public secretary, Emma Powerful, entitled Nigerian Army, to stop intimidating and misleading the judges with fake news about IPOB. Alleged that each time the case of its leader draws closer, 
the Nigerian army will come up with fake news or, or arresting of killing IPOB member. The Pro Biafra group urged the Nigerian army to stop showing the Nigerian public and the world that it has no class, no honor, and no dignity, adding that the history of how IPOB was founded is a matter of public knowledge that predates the Shadish antiques by the media department of the Nigerian army. IPOB queried at the people handling Nigerian army medal telling, telling us they are not aware that Master Nanikano was the founder and leader of the IPOB before they invaded his house to kill him in his Omaha home on October 14, 2017. It, it is, is it the Nigerian army ignorance of the leading count in the unlawful charges leveled against Mazen Nandekano to the effect that he is the founder and the leader of the IPOB? How come the new founder of IPOB has emerged from the Nigerian army after the arrest of, of criminals they have been parading as IPOB. The Nigerian army should stop giving the impression that it has no class, no honor, and no dignity. IPOB statement reads further, We, the great and noble family of the indigenous people of Biafra, IPOB, led by our indomitable leader, Mazen Nandekano, wish to bring the latest pathetic attempt by a Nigerian army in a long line of previous wretched attempts to influence the justice an upcoming case of our leader, Mazen Nam de Kano. The illegal proscription of IPOB will surely fail as all previous attempts did. No content with using gullible media house under the apparel to demonize IPOB. The Nigerian army has now gone one step further in the voyage of ridiculous step further in the voyage of ridiculous step by stating that they arrested the founding father of IPOB, whom IPOB did not know. The question of any sensible person should ask is where on earth is the founding mother of IPOB now the Nigerian army has claimed they have arrested the founding father of IPOB. What sort of officer and gentleman will agree to be throated out in front of cameras and microphones to take a mockery of the image of Nigerian army? That shows no class, no honor, no dignity, said IPOB leader. The history of how IPOB was founded is a matter of public knowledge that predates the childish antiques by the, by the media department of the Nigerian army. Are the people handling the Nigerian army telling us they are not aware that Mazen Nandekano was the founder and leader of IPOB before they invaded his house and ki uh, to kill him? On October 14, 2017, is the army ignorant of the leading count in the lawful charges? All right, wonderful people. Now, don't see us start one. They happen. Uh, the Nigerian army said that they have arrested uh, the founding father of IPOB, and um, uh, the members of um, IPOB are worried. Uh, their worry is who is now the founding father of the IPOB. Uh, if there is another founding father of IPOB, what about Mazen Nandekano, their leader? Uh, this is the question that um, IPOB members are asking. Meanwhile, this is where I'll be winding down the curtain. And if this is your first time of joining us on this channel, kindly go on and subscribe, like, comment, and also remember to share. Thank you for listening. God bless you.